Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we're making Shen Jian Bao. It's like a pan fried soup dumpling. The top is like a steam bun, very soft and fluffy. The bottom is nicely crusty and it has rich savory soup inside. So good! <laughs> I can't wait to share it with you. First, let's make a jelly broth, which will set in the fridge and you can wrap it into the dumplings. When you cook it, it melts into a delicious broth. You want to make this one day early because it is the time consuming part. You will need 300 grams of pork skin. If you don't want to cook with pork, you can use beef tendon or even gelatin powder will work. The ratio is different. Here are the recommendations for that. Put the pork skin in a big pot, add enough water to cover it, bring this to a boil. You see those impurities floating on the top? That is what makes pork skin smells awful. We're gonna get rid of that by washing it under running water. Give them a check to see if there is any attached hair. My pork skin came pretty clean. If yours has it, you can use a tool like this that will help you pinch off the hair. You also want to trim off any excess fat because we don't want our broth to be too oily. Cut the skin into smaller pieces, which will help the gelatin dissolve into the liquid faster. When you cut it, it is better not to pile few layers of skin together because they are very tough and if you don't have a good knife, the top layer will likely slip. That is very dangerous and I don't want you to get hurt. Add it to a clean pot along with some Chinese cooking wine, three pieces of spring onion that I tied into knot, five slices of ginger, and eight cloves of garlic. These garlic are quite small. You can use less cloves if your garlic is big. Pour in six cups of water, bring this to a boil, turn the heat to low, let it simmer for two hours. The skin should be completely soft that you can easily break it with chopsticks. The broth should have a milky and creamy texture. It's very thick and velvety. Even though I show how the broth looks like, it is still quite hard to know if it's good enough to be set in the fridge. Here is a great way to test it. There is some broth attached to the spoon. You just put it in room temperature for 5 to 8 minutes. Then you should see that it is already start setting. That is the gelatin forming up, which means your broth is good to go. Let it go through a sieve. You should have about 2 cups of broth left. If you don't have enough, you can add some water in it. If you have too much liquid, you can always put it back on the stove and reduce it. We're gonna pour the broth into a container. A plastic wrap will help you take out the jelly easily. Pour the broth in and let it sit in the fridge for at least 6 hours so it has enough time to form up. Now let's make the filling. You will need 350 grams of ground pork some aromatic water, which I just simply blend 4 cloves of garlic, 4 slices of ginger, half tablespoon of Sichuan peppercorn, and a quarter cup of water. Blend everything together. Let it go through a sieve and get rid of the solid part. Continue adding 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 plus a quarter teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a drizzle of sesame oil for some nutty taste. Mix the filling until all the liquid is gone, then stir the meat within one direction for 5 to 6 minutes. 
Also, you can bring the filling to a high position and throw it back to the bowl. This will create a better texture for the dumplings. Set that aside. If you made the jelly one day ahead, by now they should be ready. Take it out and roughly cut it first, then mince it. You want to do it as fine as you can so you will have an evenly mixed filling. Also, you want to do this fast because if your room temperature is too hot, it will start melting. Feel free to put it back in the fridge if it starts getting soft. Add the minced jelly into the meat filling. Do your best to combine them together. The meat is quite sticky now and the jelly is very loose, so it will take a while to mix them well. Cover it. This needs to go into the fridge because we don't want it melt in the room temperature. Now, let's make the other part of the filling, shrimp. For this recipe, I like to use these smaller shrimp because they are cheaper compared to the bigger ones. And if you do get the bigger ones, you still need to cut them into smaller size anyway. Just simply season it with a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a drizzle of olive oil, and one eighth teaspoon of baking soda. Mix everything and set it in the fridge as well. Now, let's make the shenzhen bun skin. Well, this is not an easy recipe. It's very challenging. You will need 400 grams of all-purpose flour, add half teaspoon of salt, give it a stir so the salt can be distributed. Mix half teaspoon of dry yeast with 220 grams of water. Pour the yeast water to the flour in batches. Use chopsticks to stir it in the same time. When it looks like this, Start gathering all the flour together, knead it into a dough. It might be very rough and ugly in the beginning, that is okay, just cover it and let it sit for 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, the dough will be much softer and pliable. You can easily knead it smooth within 5 minutes. Transfer it onto a working surface, keep kneading it, you want to get a smooth, shiny, elastic dough. Cover it, let it proof. Most recipes out there will tell you to proof for 30 minutes. That is correct, but I wouldn't recommend that. Shenzhen bun skin requires half proof dough. Over rising it will cause soup leaking or other problems. I suggest you let it sit for only 10 minutes unless you are professional. Most people work slow at rolling dumpling skins. The dough will keep rising while you are working with it, so don't worry about too much. If your room temperature is too hot or you feel like that your dough is getting soggy, feel free to put it in the fridge to slow down the proofing process. Stretch and cut the dough into two long strips. Dust some flour and roll them even. The recipe is enough for making 24 buns, so we are going to divide them into 24 even pieces. Dust more flour so they don't stick to each other. Flatten them one by one with your palm. As I mentioned before, if you feel like you're gonna work slow, Save some of the dough and set it in the fridge so it won't be overriced. Now you can take out the filling. Add half cup of diced spring onion to the filling. I reserved some of it to add it at the end. I like to add the veggies ingredients the last so I can maximize the fragrance. Mix it well and we can make the shenzhen buns. Get a piece of dough. Flatten it a little more, right hand rolls it, left hand holds and turns the dough. Repeat this again and again until you get a round wrapper with a thin edge and thick middle. The size should be 10 to 11 centimeter across. 
Put some filling in the middle of the wrapper. Pack it tight because you don't want to wrap too much air inside or else it might explode during cooking. Put a piece of shrimp on the top and you can start closing it. Lift and pinch the edge to make pleat. Use your left hand to help continue all the way around. At the end, twist a little bit and pinch it to close it. There you go! It does need some practice to make it perfect, but it will be fine as long as you can completely secure the filling inside. You want to use a heavy duty frying pan, heat it up, and add a generous amount of oil to cover the bottom. Don't need to wait for the oil to get hot. Place the shenzhen buns in. Make sure to leave some space between them because they will enlarge the sides while cooking. You see the edge of the buns starts sizzling? Add some water, about 3 to 4 tablespoons. There will be a lot of steam coming up immediately. Cover the lid and let it cook for 8 minutes on medium heat or until all the liquid is gone. Open the lid, sprinkle some spring onion and some sesame seeds for the nutty taste. By now, the bottom should be nicely crusty. I flipped some of them over just to show you the color, but you shouldn't do that because the soup might leak while flipping and you will lose the best part of the buns. You can just serve it with the frying pan because it is heavy duty, it will keep producing heat even if it is off the stove, which will keep the bottom of the buns crispy for a while. Now it is the time to show you the best part of this recipe. You poke a hole, there will be lots of soup coming out. It's so juicy. The sauce I am serving is very simple. One part of soy sauce, two parts of vinegar, and some ginger strips. It goes so good with this shenzhen bun. Let's give it a try. This is so good. When you bite into it, the skin just soft and crusty at the same time. The soup is so rich and velvety, has lots of flavors in it. I would say this combined all the good characters of all kinds of dumplings together. <laughs> I know it looks difficult to make, but come on, this could be the best dumpling you will ever have. It's definitely worth of trying. As always, the recipe is in the description box down below the video. You can go check that out. Also, make sure you take a look of my channel and find out how to make your favorite Chinese food. New videos coming out every Wednesday and I'll see you next time. Bye!